triple C. I'm gonna make them bend the knee. Rolling with the triple C. Don't really got the heat. So the BMF is up for grabs. Justin Gaethje versus Dustin Poirier. Guys, this video wouldn't be brought to you without our special sponsor, that right, Cookie Co. Whenever you guys want to indulge with all natural ingredients, you guys love oof, cinnamon swirl, cookies and cream. Oh my God, I'm about to get water. So when I get back to the States, you know where I'm going. You guys make sure to go to cookieco.com and find a store near you. The BMF title is up for grabs. I tell you what, guys, right off the back, <clears throat> the person that who I feel should be introducing the BMF, it's not The Rock. It's not a WWE superstar. It's not an actor. Do you smell what The Rock is cooking? You know who it should be? His name is Uncle Mike Tyson. There's not there wasn't a better guy that I can describe to think of somebody who to really deliver that belt. So Dana White, UFC, if you guys are gonna bring somebody in to really deliver this belt and do it right and put some more prestige on that belt, his name is Mike Tyson. You know, this belt right here actually reminds me a little bit of the BMF, kind of the this is silver, black, kind of Raider look-alike kind of type belt. But anyhow, moving forward, since George Masvidal retired, the UFC is pulling a good shtick or a good gimmick while bringing this belt. Because you know what, guys? It is all about entertainment. It is about selling something that maybe these guys, I don't know if they'll ever be undisputed champions. Or, I mean, could they be? Yeah, 100%. So now, looking up at the matchup, after George Masvidal retired, how is it that Justin Gaethje versus Dustin Poirier line up now? Guys, I was there at that fight when Dustin beat... Uh, when Dustin was, had the ability of stopping Justin Gaethje. I was there. I was there, and I can tell you right now, and I, I've talked to Justin about this. He, uh, Justin had... Uh, There's a time where Dustin was hurt. And this is kudos to Justin. I'm sorry, to uh, Poirier. And Poirier's got a set of, of cojones on him. It's it's crazy. If there's anybody that's, a, that's the toughest matchup for Gaethje... It is somebody that has that durability, that that resistance of taking pain, that ability of just taking pain, taking a punch and continue to keep walking forward. You know, his name is Dustin Poirier. But who is it that's advanced more? It has been maybe a few to four years since they've actually fought. It's a different fight now. It really is. The reason why I said it is because Justin Gaethje now He's gotten better. He's been a little more. He's been. A, he's reserved a little more of his. Even though he's still violent, he's reserved a little more of his violence, and he's been able to use it accordingly. But not just that, guys. His takedowns are coming in. He started just starting to wrestle once again. That could completely throw a, a wrench in in this fight as well. I mean, if you notice a fight with Fiziev, I mean, guys, Fiziev. In my opinion, at that time, I thought he had the best striking. Not just, not only for the 155 pounds, but overall. Very tricky. Everything that he does was, every, like, it was all, uh, it has amazing setups and things of that nature. And uh, it just engaged you was able to get that one. And be able to get that one decisively. Be able to hurt a guy like Fizia. If there's anybody who has truly made improvements, his name is Justin Gaethje. Not just not just because we're friends, but because it's actually facts, you know. But also Poirier. I mean, we have to look at who Poirier has been stopping Michael Chandler, um, you know, having having you know losing to a lot of the top tier guys, but also having success amongst some of the best middleweights in the world and still being. At the cream of the crop, always been in the top five. You know, this is this is a good matchup. This this is uh this is a fight that I believe is gonna sell a lot of pay-per-views. And uh and that's something that I'm excited for. I think the resurrection of the BMF um I think would be uh would would be extremely extremely awesome. But I also think that maybe they should bring a little more belts into uh more BMFs into maybe maybe they should have a BMF for every category. 
You know, I think that would be cool too. I think you have you can have more main events according to more BMF stuff. Yeah, there's a bit more belts, but I think everybody will also will always know that the best belt there is is having that world championship belt around your waist. So I'm excited for this matchup. Uh, it's in a headline in Salt Lake City, Utah. I want to say it's UFC 191, if I'm not mistaken. But anyhow, what you got for me, Michael? Yeah, UFC 291, but yeah. Um, so no, so do you think, back on the kind of the Mike Tyson thing, um, yeah, do you think maybe you'll you'll reach out to him, tell him like, hey, you should you should be the one to do that. Do you think, do you think that'd be, I know he's done stuff with PFL, so do you think that's something he'd be interested in doing? Oh, 100%, dude. Mike Tyson loves mixed martial arts. Like, he really does. Mike Tyson really loves mixed martial arts like you wouldn't believe. You know, he enjoys it. He loves it. I know back in his heyday, he was like, man, if this stuff, I started, if it was as big as it was now, I probably wouldn't even be a boxer. But I just think it just suits uh, a guy like Mike Tyson very well, who, who still, to this day, holds a record for the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. I mean, this is this is a record that's probably going to go on to uh, to Stanford. Maybe it's getting it's getting close up to about forty years now. I want to say it's uh, thirty seven years that he's held the record, which is extremely impressive. Yeah, and so you're saying more more BMF titles would be would be a good thing. Uh, what do you think about potentially if? Kamaru Usman Hamzat, if, if they fought, could you could you see that if maybe maybe if Kamaru moves up to one eighty five or maybe they even do catch weight at one eighty? Do you think that's worthy of like a BMF? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, sure, because it, it, it's another it's another weight class. You know, you're able to create so many more storylines when you put a belt on the line. Like, yeah, you're gonna feed more to the casuals, but. That's not always a bad thing. You know, if the UFC really sees it the way I see it, they see it, they see it on one angle. They see it with one belt. But if you're just able to get a bunch of, inaugurate a bunch of these BMF belts and be able to start handing them out, it'll give people kind of something cool to kind of fight for, you know? But you also don't want to lose the authenticity of being a world champion and having a UFC belt because that should always remain number one as well. But at the end of the day, guys, it's all about money. So if the BMF brings money, they continue to keep printing it and continue to keep making it.